The Ravens in 2023 were one of, if not the best team in the NFL last year. They had a top five defense and they had another MVP level uh, year from Lamar Jackson. Well, he actually did have an MVP level year because he won the damn thing. But when it came to shove, when it came to push, despite all that, sure, they got themselves a 13-4 and record. They got the top seed in the AFC. They won uh, handedly against the Houston Texans in the divisional game. But in spite of all that, that same team just didn't show up against the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs as they lost a close AFC title game at home. And they let their own Super Bowl berth slip away at the hands of the eventual back-to-back champion Chiefs. So they let a lot of, they let a lot of things go away in that game. And a lot of it had to do with Lamar Jackson just letting the pressure once again get to him. So you look at what happened this past offseason, and you look back at that AFC Championship game, you think to yourselves, was that our best chance to get to the game? To get to the big to the big game? So, something to think about. Especially when you look at what happened this past offseason. Looking at some of the key events that happened, they replaced uh, Mike McDonald, who moved on uh, out west to be the new head coach for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, so, you need a new defensive coordinator. You promote linebackers coach in-house, uh, Zach Orr, to be that new guy. So, we'll see how how that works out for them. Um, and then they also traded away one of their offensive linemen, Morgan Moses, to the New York Jets. So one of your starters is now gone. Uh, but at least you keep one of your key guys on the opposite side of the line, and that's edge rusher Justin Madubike, uh, to a big, fat contract. So at least for the Ravens, you at least keep one of your key guys. Um, but uh, unfortunately, he, he was just one, one of the very few additions that the Ravens could make. Because when you look at the Ravens offseason, there was a lot of losses. There was a lot. And this is a very extensive list. Like, you lose edge rusher Jadavian Clowney uh, to the Panthers. You also lose uh, Patrick Queen to your division rival, the Steelers. You lose Geno Smith at safety to the Bengals, also a division rival. Um, And then going on to the offensive side of the ball, you lose Odell Beckham Jr. and Devin DuVernay to the Dolphins and the Jaguars, respectively. And then you, at running back, you lose both J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, your backup backs, uh, to the L.A. Chargers. They both go out west. <laughs> and then staying on, and going back to the offensive line, your guards, your starting guards, John Smith and Kevin Zeitler, move on to different teams. Smith, Simpson going to the Jets. And then Zeitler, more importantly, goes to the Lions. That's a lot of players. That's a lot of uh, key players from last year's team gone in a flash. So there, there's, there was something that they had to address like very quick on the fly um, in free agency in the draft. So what they tried to do in free, in free agency, not a whole lot because they didn't have a lot of money to spend. Um, like they tried their they added running back Derek Henry from the Titans um, and then offensive lineman, Josh Jones, uh, Cheap rotational piece from the Texans. And then very late into training camp, uh, Eddie Jackson at safety from the from the Bears. So going going backwards a little bit towards the draft, they tried to address those uh those losses by replacing them with corner Nate Wiggins from Clemson. A very a very solid corner, mind mind you. And they also got offensive lineman Roger Rosengarden from Washington. Probably one of those guys that can replace um when the tack uh insert him into one of the tackle spots. You also got edge rusher Adisa Isaac from Penn State, obviously to replace Javon Clowney. Receiver Devontae Walker from North Carolina, a deaf spot um in, in the receiving room. And then TJ Tampa from Iowa State. And then you also have Rush Rasheen Ali from Marshall. I didn't even know Marshall was the school. Interesting. So anyway, in short for this Baltimore Ravens, um going into the season. Well, basically they got purged this, <laughs> this off season. Like they got purged hard. Um, if you, if you want to look at the grand scheme of things and honestly, this was expected when they had very little money to work with to keep everyone. But man, when you look at all those losses that I just talked about, it was pretty staggering. 
these were a lot of pretty staggering losses, especially at the offensive line. You lost three starters um, in Kevin Zeitler, John Simpson at, at guard, and then at tackle, you lose Morgan Moses. You trade him away uh, to the Jets. So those, those starters, those key contributors to protecting Lamar Jackson, they're, they're away now. And then defensively, sure, there weren't as many losses there, but you lost two key big contributors to your defense and Patrick Queen and Jadavion Clowney. So that's really tough, man. That's really tough. And sure, they recovered a little bit um, in the draft, but when you look at it, is it really going to be enough um, going to this year? I mean, we'll see. Um, and staying on the offensive line, I feel like that's going to be the biggest uh, issue. And probably like a little bit of an overreaction, but I feel like it could be the biggest weakness of this team because they, they sure they still have stout left tackle Ronnie Stanley there, but he has really struggled with injury in the last couple of seasons. Um, and then, like I said, they're implementing three new people uh, into this offensive line. And don't forget their in-house replacements at guard, Andrew Voorhees and Ben Cleveland. They haven't, played a lot um mainly in reserve roles but this is their first crack at starting jobs so it's going to be interesting how how they do in training camp how they do in preseason action and then by the time you get to the regular season if they're in those spots we'll see how that works out so i feel like the offensive line is it could be in for some some trouble if they're not going to be able to protect lamar jackson well i feel like he's going to be on the run like a good amount so looking at some of the key games this coming this season, um, you start week one, a rematch of the AC title game. But this time, you have to go to Kansas City to take on the, the two-time, the back-to-back Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, you start on the road, and then you look forward, uh, skipping ahead, week three, take on the Dallas Cowboys um, in Jerry World. Um, a pretty good matchup there. And then you go back home to take on the Buffalo, Will- the Buffalo Bills the week later. And then... A week later, you take on the Cincinnati Bengals in your first division game of the year. So, some interesting stuff. A a kind of tough schedule to start the year if you're the Baltimore Ravens. So, some things I want to ask this team. Um, If you want to try to compete for a playoff spot, you want to try to win the North again, and more importantly, try to go for a deeper playoff run. So, if you're the, the Baltimore Ravens, I have to ask Lamar Jackson, can you finally get it done in a major game? And I'm not talking about a regular season game that where push comes to shove or they need you in the clutch. Can like if you do if they do end up making the playoffs, can they can they get it done? Can can they achieve their goal, the ultimate goal, mind you, and that's reach the Super Bowl. I mean, they had, again, a very good regular season last year. They had a very good divisional game against Houston. But I felt like Lamar Jackson was a little was in over his head against the Kansas City Chiefs. I felt like he was trying too hard. Um, it was a very familiar sense in those playoff losses to the Bills and Titans a couple of years ago. So, I mean, I, I know Lamar Jackson could turn it on in a key regular season game. He's actually gotten a lot better as a passer um, this past year. And he's finally bound that balancing act between... When, when I need to be a passer, and, but especially when he needs to be a runner. But if the Ravens make it back to the dance, you got to wonder, can he finally close the deal when things really matter the most? And then defensively, you know, you got all these ma- major changes on that side of the ball because, again, with all those key defensive players gone on other teams, but then you also have the change in coordinator from Mike McDonald to Zach Orr. Again, it's going to be interesting how that, uh, how things uh, change in terms of scheme, uh, personnel, how they're currently adjusting, um, and how that'll apply to in-game action a couple weeks uh, later with preseason that's about to start. So, overall, you know, it's a bit of a shame that the Ravens couldn't get it done um, this pa- uh, this past last year um, and reach the Super Bowl because they had a pretty talented team, a pretty balanced one, uh, as a matter of fact. And I felt like you know, with that balanced act, it was their best chance to reach the Super Bowl. Yet, 
they just couldn't take advantage of it. So I do expect the Ravens to compete for a playoff spot because there's still some talent on that team. And obviously they have Lamar Jackson still, but you just have to wonder that changeover in the offensive line and on defense can make things a little bit more difficult for them in a very competitive AFC, especially when you have Cincinnati on the bounce back as well. <laughs>